What's up everybody? Welcome back to what they teach you in high school. Hey, today we're talking about elections in America. And if you need to know one thing about elections, you should think of democracy. Welcome back to what they teach you in high school. All right, scallywags, listen, I tried to back up for you guys because you told me to back up and stand up and do all sorts of things I didn't feel comfortable with, but I'm not into that kind of thing. I'm getting up close and personal for this video. We're talking political elections in the United States of America after all. And there's really three that we're gonna examine and we're gonna go from the least influential elections to the most influential elections. I'm pretty sure that's not how you're supposed to share information on YouTube because the average viewer watches my videos for like one fifth of the time. And I spend a lot of time working on these and I typically slide fun little tips in at the end to keep people's attention, but it hasn't really worked out. So the first election we're going to look at really briefly is what's called the off-year election. And the off-year election is any election that happens where the president is not on the ballot. And the reason that I'm talking about these first is because they have a much lower voter turnout than presidential elections. They don't have to, they just happen to. In fact, on average, the voter turnout in an off-year election in the United States is roughly 39%. 39% of the voting population engages in off-year elections where they're not voting for a president. That's pretty low, which gets us to our next type of election. We've got our presidential election, which is the opposite of our off-year elections. This is elections where the presidents do show up on the ballot. And before you get to the general election in a presidential election, the first step in the election process is the primary election. And the primary election is where each individual party decides who their nominee is going to be. And a primary election happens basically how a general election happens. You determine who your candidate's gonna be by looking at all the different offices that are available to be run for except everyone represents the same party. You've got either the Republican Party or the Democrat Party or some other different parties, but we won't get into those today because the Republicans and the Democrats basically dominate these electoral processes. After the presidential primaries, the winner goes to the general election and then the real work begins. Oftentimes they're working on a shoestring budget to manage their campaign. Typically they're trying to build momentum in order to gain support from people across different states. But if they lack significant funding, they're trying to win Iowa so that they can collect enough money to win New Hampshire to collect enough money to win on Super Tuesday. By the time they make it to the general election though, they need to have a robust nationwide political campaign organization filled with professional campaigners as well as volunteers. That includes building up a massive war chest where they're collecting donations from pretty much anyone who's willing to give them money at this point. Because like I said in the last video, these people have raised billions of dollars. And I won't do the Dr. Evil thing again, I promise. Finally, you get enough votes in your party to become your party's nominee. Once you're the party's nominee, you begin running in the general election against your opponent's party for the office you seek. In this instance, we're looking primarily at the presidential election. What's tricky about the primary elections is you're typically trying to court what is called the party's base. That's the people who are the most hardcore because sometimes you'll get as few as 10% of the voting population engaged in the primary elections. And it's normally people who are super passionate about the process, like me or your crazy uncle. Once you gain the nomination though, oftentimes you see what we call candidates running to the center, trying to become relevant enough to the average American who's not a crazy party person in order to gain support in the general election. So the election happens on the first Tuesday in November and the goal is to gather enough votes to win 270 electoral college votes. Suddenly you might be like, electoral college votes? What the heck is that? I thought we voted for the president and every vote mattered in one voice, one vote, one vote, one person type of stuff. In fact, our country's old, even older than the presidential candidates we have to vote for. And they're really old. And before we had the confidence and the comfortability to trust that people were getting good information or information at all about these people, we wanted to make sure that we had people who knew what they were talking about casting the final vote for who became the president of the United States. The way it works is each state is committed to counting up the votes and whoever wins the popular vote, that person's group of electors will then go to the electoral college where they'll cast their vote. Some of the contentious debates we have in this country is whether the electoral college is still even necessary or whether a true popular vote should determine the winner of the presidential election. There's lots of people making lots of different claims out there, but I think it's an interesting debate to be had. And in fact, I'd love to hear your idea about how we should or shouldn't maintain the Electoral College in the comments down below. Hit me up. Once the electoral votes are cast, a declaration is made of who the president will become. And that president is sworn in in Washington, DC at the end of January in the following year. 
And there you have it, folks. There's your quick and dirty summary of how political elections take place in the United States of America. Hey, as always, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the little bell button so you know I'm coming next time. Make sure you're sharing these with your family, with your friends, and most importantly, with your high school social studies teacher. Hey, thanks again for watching what they teach you in high school. We'll see you next time, folks. Peace.